one more day. There is one more day until Starfield will finally be playable by all of you guys out there in the open. Starfield currently is being played by a lot of content creators for review and you're going to get a wave, a monsoon of content will be coming your way from some of your favorite content creators, whether it's reviews, I'm sure there'll be some guides out and some tons of different videos. I have no idea what people are cooking up right now. Definitely tons of reviews and impressions as soon as the embargo lifts tomorrow morning. Prepare your sub feeds. Can't really prepare your sub feed, I guess, but you 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 can be prepared to expect Starfield, 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 if that's not what your every account looks like already to some capacity. But for the rest of us, later that evening, we're going to be able to play. However, there's still some last minute details that are emerging about the game that I wanted to just simply sit down share with all of you guys hopefully it makes the wait like 12 minutes shorter about the length of whatever this video will end up being i know you guys are really excited i'm really excited so let's get into two interviews coming from emil pagirulo and pete hines on polygon and a spanish news website called vandal respectively both of these interviews have tons and tons of information that you can go off and explore on your own. I will leave them linked in the description below if you'd like to check it out. There's definitely a lot worth looking into, especially if you want to know more about kind of the inside information bits about the development of Starfield, some of the decisions that were made, why certain choices were done, so on and so forth. I did want to just go through some of the highlights, some of the important or more interesting news bits that I personally found with all of you today, starting off with the Polygon interview with Emil Pagrulo. One of the interesting points for Starfield to me has always been the concept of religion and we know about some of them for example the Sanctum Universum or House Varun which I know many of you are interested in and they talked a little bit about this. The question asked was I've heard you talk about how the Dark Brotherhood in Skyrim was sort of a take on Catholicism which makes sense to me since you were raised in a slightly Catholic city of Boston so does this grappling with religion feel like a personal expression in Starfield? Poking that snake in something where you're basically expected to be scientific and objective and you just decided to go into a metaphysical direction. Emil answers, Todd and I both grew up in religious settings. I grew up Catholic, obviously, but I think Starfield has more to do with where I'm in my life right now. I flip-flopped from agnostic to atheist probably five times in the course of making this game. That's why both views are representing represented in this game. There's the atheist view, there's more of the agnostic religious view, but we don't answer that question for the player. And that's always what Bethesda games have been about, is letting you make the decisions and letting you make the choice and come up with your own interpretations. I think very too often stuff is spoon-fed and you should think for yourself. You should believe whatever you think is appropriate, either based on the character that you're role-playing, that's totally fine, or based on if you're kind of playing an avatar of yourself, what you genuinely believe based on the information you're being fed about this universe. I feel like Bethesda games are always pretty good with that. But this isn't the first time we've heard the intensity, if you will, about Starfield and how it makes you think about the greater world at large. In fact, the game's composer, Inan Zer, stepped out and said that it will give you a deeper perspective to your whole being. In the full quote, Enan mentioned that Starfield is a deep and philosophical game. It's a game that will consume a lot of, if you want to play Starfield, it'll consume a lot of your being. I believe that after Starfield, you will be a bit of, I wouldn't say a changed person, but will definitely give you another perspective. Pretty big claim for any game, but I'm appreciative that Bethesda has taken on the challenge to approach some of these themes. Whether or not it has that level of an effect on most of us remains to be seen, but I think definitely if you're able to get into your character and you're able to really absorb yourself into this universe, it's possible. Point is, multiple times we've heard about how deep this game can get, and it's being reaffirmed here. Another very interesting tidbit from this interview, among several, mind you, but one that I wanted to pull out was the idea of a voice protagonist, something that was first introduced to Bethesda games during Fallout 4, and initially was supposed to make an appearance in Starfield. During the interview, it was asked if, based on Fallout 4, the choosing to remove the voice protagonist was a response to fan reactions. Emil said no, not directly, but it did certainly play into it. I firmly believe Bethesda is a company that genuinely listens to fans' responses and fans' approaches and what they have to say and tries to incorporate that feedback into the game. And we're going to touch on that a little bit during the Pete Hines interview. It should make a lot of you probably happy. Some of you, maybe not. 
who knows he continues on saying early on in the game we did have a voice protagonist in pre-production the plan was to have a voice protagonist but in starfield you can make every different type of person we realized that the only way to really do it and let the player be the person they want to be was to have an unvoiced protagonist and this is the root of how i personally feel about bethesda games while i enjoy fallout 4 and i know a lot of people don't want to read the lines of dialogue, which it's reading, you can do it. But a lot of people appreciate having a voice to give the notation towards the character, and I can respect that. The other side to that, the side that I personally fall on, is that you play Fallout 4 and you can do different variations, whether you're playing as Nate or Nora, but it's always Nate or Nora, and you're just playing different versions of them. You're not playing the character that you're able to roleplay in your head. So when we hear about Pete Hines playing as all of these different characters and getting all these different roleplay experiences and spending 100 hours in having a completely different experience than two other people who have played the game for over 100 hours, it's because you can role play into the character you want you can live out that fantasy he also goes on to mention another tangible benefit of not having a voice protagonist he says quote so then we just arrived at what if we just go text and it was just really freeing and i mean we have over 200,000 lines of spoken dialogue in starfield with no voice protagonists and it was not having a voice protagonist that allowed us to create such a big world when you need to design the game around the character having lines it's restrictive one in the budget because that's an entire different voice actor not one but two for a bethesda game since you need both a male and a female version more so if you choose to hire different voices to portray all the lines in the game you're going to have to cut in other places it's going to have to be cut in the npc reactivity because they can't vocalize as many lines to respond to what's going on it's going to cut in the amount of content you can do because you can't have the player character voice all of those lines in addition to all the npcs that are in the game the idea the concept that this was freeing i hope is a telling sign for what will continue to see from bethesda game studios even if, as they mentioned, it seemed as though at one point every single game had a voice protagonist, I want Bethesda to continue to pave their own way, go against the grain in that regard, if that is the trend, and make the types of games that we can roleplay in. The roleplay in an RPG. But anyway, spending a long time on this subject, let's get into some interviews coming from Pete Hines. This was from the Spanish news outlet Vandal, and they have quite a few details we have not necessarily heard before some of it's alluded to but some new information one of the elements that keeps coming up regarding starfield is in the idea of tons and tons of content pete hines expressed this number of times during his gamescom interviews we've heard this just recently from emma pagarulo and now he goes on to expand a little bit more on that stating quote no one will know everything about starfield a week after launch they won't know everything about starfield a month after launch there's so much along the way it's been created with so much content that people are going to keep discovering new new things for weeks, months, and years, and that's what makes it fun. How many possibilities are there to do whatever you want? When Bethesda mentions having a game that can last for people for 10 years, yes, part of that is a thousand percent the mods, which we're going to talk about, but the other portion of that is having enough there and enough variation in the content. That's part of the reason why I'm sort of in favor of locking some things off if you make certain choices gives you a reason to go back and try out a different play style and see how different the results can be based on what you do but starfield just has so much to do to begin with you're in for a fun time and you're going to have years worth of stuff to explore that's probably even with watching youtube videos that show you some of the secrets of the game speaking of content pete hines dives both into exploring space and exploring planet side again things that were touched on but get expanded a little bit further when asked about what you can do in space pete hines said that there are space stations there are ruined ships there are enemies that will attack you there are people who need help there are people who will give you missions there are many things to do very small spoiler for one particular encounter that you can come across in space that pete hines is explicitly calls out during this interview he says that one of his favorites was coming across this kind of space tour ship and they asked with pete hines being a real captain or his character being a real captain they asked if they could talk to the tourists about their experiences and you had the option to just say no you had the option to attack them or you had the option to go through with it and you get to ask all these sorts of different questions you really get to define a little bit more about your character as you go through each of them and try to either impress them or tell them how dangerous it is i would assume a lot of detail has gone into space to make it interesting to make it fun to explore but also on the ground as well as pete hines explicitly calls out 
about some situations and instances that you can get into on the planet of Neon. Pete says that there's a war between gangs, there's all kinds of missions, and people who will give you quests, stories, or offers like joining Ryujin Industries security team. So yet another faction we knew was in the game. I always questioned whether or not you'd actually be able to join them or just do jobs for them. Seems like you can actively join their faction by being part of security and whatever that might entail which is going to be exciting, especially because you have that cyberpunk criminal element to Neon going on there. Really interested in what players will get up to. Something that he reiterated in this interview that he also brought up during Gamescom was that he spent just a week in space doing only space activities and saying, hey, I wonder what I can get into if I never leave my ship. And subsequently, he spent a week just on the ground and doing quests. And sure, there's going to be certain quests that say, hey, I need you to go deliver this item to me over here. And it requires you to leave the planet, but you can choose to just stay on the planet do the missions that are there for a considerable amount of time and mind you that might be more specific to some of the major settlements in the game aquila new atlantis neon and so on but that opportunity does exist where you can role play within the confines of the settlements that would have stuff to do in them and a couple of very important post launch updates that i want to provide to all of you one of the major questions is on the subject of mods i've seen it in my own comment section will mods be available Yes, they've said this multiple times, but Pete Hines has explicitly confirmed that mods will be coming to Xbox and to PC. So you'll be able to do it in both places. You don't have to worry if you're on console. The Creation Club also is almost certainly making a return. That will be separate. You will still have access to free mods to continue to enhance, change, tweak your game in any way that you want. The interviewer asked about the possibility of a 60 FPS mode, which Pete Hines, to his credit, said, don't expect it. Pretty much, no, it's not going to happen. It was likened to Redfall, which is supposed to get a 60 FPS patch. However, with Starfield, they said it's two different engines, two completely different games. Don't expect it here just because we've done it in other games before in the past. And lastly, on the subject of DLC, now this one was interesting, not because we learned exactly what type of DLC we're going to get, of course they're not going to spill that, but I did mention earlier on how Bethesda genuinely does try to listen to their players and to their audiences. This is a bit of an example of that. Let's go through what he had to say. I don't want to give anything away, but Broken Space... Side note, I don't think this is Pete Hines getting it wrong. It's, I think, just a translation thing because the website is translated, so... Just do note that is a DLC size, one of those we have planned, but we have a lot of ideas for other sizes of things we can add to the world. Really, part of decisions about this usually comes from, well, we have to wait until next week. We want people to play and find out how people play different parts of the game and know what they want more of. We're sitting here making decisions about DLC, but 12 million or 20 million people are going to play this game and what we think can change tremendously. We're going to do a mix of things along the way. Our support for this game is going to last for a while, but for how long and how much DLC, I can't say right now. We need to publish the game the following week in early access and the week after and respond to that later. Bethesda absolutely is going to be gathering those statistics of where players spend their time, what they get most involved in, the types of things they like and don't like, and they're going to be looking at numbers. That's the only way to do it when you have a potential 12 to 20 million people who are playing your game. But in the process, there's all different types of DLC that Bethesda can do at different scales, at different price points even. We saw that with Fallout 4, where you would have some DLCs that just expand stuff in the settlement system. If you didn't care about that, you didn't have to buy it, you could skip out on it. Other DLCs would provide the full expansions like Nuka World, like Far Harbor. I fully suspect that Starfield will see a continued combination of both of these. Some elements in particular that I have speculated on is the possibility of building your own space station because that is an element seemingly absent from the game that would make sense to have in the space game. For me, I always love the story expansions. One, because the amount of content you get is usually incredible from the amount of new armors, new weapons, new customizations, NPCs, companions, new regions to explore. Bethesda usually does at least one of those and I fully expect at some point we should be able to travel out of the settled systems, at least I would hope. But just know it is coming, it is part of the plan, and whatever feedback you give to Bethesda, they're listening to. And if you're looking for just absolutely every single bit of information you can get on Starfield, 
The official Starfield Twitter account has been, over the past couple weeks, releasing these interesting little snippets about characters within Constellation, some of which we never really knew too much about. For example, Andrea here, or Sam Ko, or Mateo, right? So these characters are getting small details. We could take a look at Vasco's, for example, really quickly, where it mentions that Constellation Chair Malcolm Livingston found Vasco in an Aquila City junkyard and brought him back to the lodge to be refurbished. He's been a loyal team member ever since. It continues on stating that Vasco is one of Luna Robotics' earliest Model A robots, but with all of his upgrades, you'd never know it. He's fully outfitted and equipped to aid crew members in the field. Walter Stroud, I'm not going to go through every single one of those, but Walter Stroud, for example, while some members were hesitant to let him in, fearing he was buying his way in, his passion, knowledge of founder Sebastian Banks proved sincere enough to gain their approval. Walter has become an important part of the team, bringing Mateo on board and funding projects like the Eye, Constellation's deep space can scanner in orbit around Jemison. So you can go through and read each of these. Again, you just have to go to the official Bethesda Game Studios Twitter. I'm assuming it's also on Instagram, and it gives you that little bit of information that you might be looking for to really get to know these characters before we meet them. Of course, if you don't want to go through each of them, you can just wait until the official games comes out before you go ahead and decide who you want to talk to, who you want to meet, who you like, who you don't like, and I think that's a perfectly acceptable way to play. Just around 24 hours before we'll finally be able to play Star field for ourselves. I know everybody's incredibly excited and I want to say thank you one more time for all of you joining me on this journey. For those of you that are here, a part of the channel and active, leaving comments, likes, and all that great stuff. Thank you so very much. And also be sure to check out some of my other videos, Elder Scrolls 6 content that'll be coming, Witcher 4 content, and all the other games that I cover. I hope you'll be here for it. We're going to be largely RPGs. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, I hope to see you all next time. So long everybody.